Good morning. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I am good, thank you. I am good. And I'm very excited because we have another guest on the show. We have Dave Pickles here with us this morning, and we are so excited to chat to Dave a little bit more today. Um, we had the pleasure of welcoming Dave into the membership very recently. And the feedback from that session was just so beautiful. And he got us drinking a lot more water and setting some great goals. So just to do a little intro, I actually met Dave at um, a TEDx talk. So I took myself out on a Saturday night out alone and I went and sat in that TEDx audience. And Dave was first up on the stage and his courage was absolutely incredible to see and inspired me before he even started speaking and Dave is a CEO he is a speaker TEDx speaker uh, an author and an adventure and performance expert who has success successfully uh, summited Kilimanjaro 61 times which is just incredible so without further ado welcome Dave to the podcast Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here and I'm excited to uh, to have a chat with you both about what we are going to do and uh, knowing the audience that you've explained behind the scenes who they are and yeah. uh, the, um, the, the whys and the reasoning behind it. There should be a lot of connection into what we're going to discuss. Fantastic. It's so great to have you here. It really is. So as always, Dave, whenever we have a guest on the show, we love to kind of um, ask you just to share a little bit about you, just to help the audience get to know you a little bit better. So if you'd kind of share a little bit about your story and um, what it is you do, how you've got to where you are um, and kind of, yeah, a bit about your your per personal growth and your journey to where you are today, um, just to kick us off, that'd be that'd be super. Oh, such a such an easy question to ask. <laughs> That's a big question as well. <laughs> yeah, if if I was twenty, I'd have a lot less to say. Um, well, the first thing that strikes me is that uh, there's there's a few really important years when we're much younger as a child that seem to influence us for the rest of our life, and um, and some of that can be really good, and some of it can be quite tough. But um, in summary, I would say. Uh, having a military background and also leading expeditions all over the world, Arctic mountain, jungle, desert, uh, and climbing some some big mountains all over the place. It's really defined, I suppose, all about people in the outdoors and getting the best out of both. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very easy to say again. Um, it's not without a lot of suffering and challenge. So there's a lot of values I've discovered about myself, uh, a lot of weaknesses, a lot of failings, but a lot of strength and success as well which has forged my values and that that's really paved my way to where I am now um, but from a domestic personal side um, married to Sarah my wife and have three children Lily who's 13 Monty who's six and Poppy who's four uh, we went on Lily Sarah and I went on a journey 10 years ago and Sarah's diagnosed with breast cancer so and she's okay now but we've been through that um, as well and the reason I mention that is in case any listeners have been through or been touched by that sort of journey I think it's really important um, to have that empathy connection but I absolutely adore the outdoors nature I love gardening absolutely love gardening I will say good morning to animals that I see and even insects and worms on my on my morning run or cycle or whatever I'm doing uh, which I do on a regular basis Monday to Friday I train every day just to sharpen my mind for the day um, but yeah very reflective of life but very grateful and appreciative of all of it even the tough stuff even the tough stuff that's wonderful. And I know you mentioned about the worms, didn't you, Dave? <laughs> you out on your jog. You mentioned this when you came to the masterclass and um, it was picking them up and moving them out of the way, wasn't it? Just showing them yeah. that respect. And yeah, I love that. Well, yes. I mean, even um, even Sunday morning, um, it was a beautiful morning. So I asked if anyone wants to come for a walk with me just for a bit. And my son always jumps at the opportunity, which is important because he's sandwiched between two sisters Mm. and so I say right come on just you and I and he goes yeah just daddy and daddy and son <laughs> anyway we go for a walk and to be a pedestrian and I use this phrase a lot just to slow down is very very important for all of us 
because we all come to um, we all come to the day and finish the day with stuff behind us, and it can change on a daily basis. So to be a pedestrian, and slow down is really important. And in fact, it rains so much, there are loads of puddles everywhere. And, and now my son, sort of, if he sees worms in water, he knows it's not good and he'll pick them out and put them in the sun on a higher bit of soil somewhere so they can dry off and then do their own thing. But um, yeah, we I like to try and expand the way I feel and think beyond three generations of, of life, because if we do, we, attach deeper importance to things a lot more we value things a lot more and uh, and that's the sort of approach that i like to um like to build into everything that i do whether it's for me personally or or whether it's to anyone else as well that's uh unfortunate enough to to be able to spend time with me because i've got some pretty bad jokes as well <laughs> Oh, I oh love that's that. I, and I so resonate with that because my girls do the same with snails. So we all walk to school and it's like if the snails are heading towards the road, it's like, no, no, go the other way, go the other way. Or if they're on the path and like not wanting anyone to tread on them and like, but I think what you've just said there is so important is it's that attaching that more more meaning to things is is so, so powerful because you do see it in a new light and I love that. And it just makes me smile every single day, every single snail that they move. And it makes me do it now, even when I'm not walking with them. <laughs> like, save you, <laughs> save you. <laughs> love that. Love it. Um, uh, and it's, it's also yeah. clear to hear, Dave, with obviously the work you do, you spend a lot of time outside. Um, and I'd just love to explore that a little bit further. Like what, you know, why is that so important to you? And why do you advocate getting outside, being outside with nature, exploring, going on adventures. What does it, you know, how does it make you feel? And what does it, what do you feel the advantages are and the benefits of doing that are? Well, I think it all started um, when I was much, much younger. So um, I was a poorly baby when I was born for various reasons. It was, uh, my mum believes it was the, it was the postnatal care and I got an infection. So that, that was, that wasn't sort of um, hereditary. It was something that happened. But I was also born with uh, chronic eczema and asthma. And so when I was younger growing up, um, we'd be eating around the table and it'd be so hot that I'd just be there in my underpants. <laughs> and in fact, you know, the heating wasn't on. And then I had to, you know, I chose to sit in the garage in the middle of winter and just have my food because I was so hot because the temperature of people, the children with eczema is, is that little bit higher. So, um, so I, I connected to fresh air and feeling the breeze on the skin, and that's a really comforting thing for me. And then um, I'd love to play and get wrapped up, but be in the rain as well. So the elements were were very important to me growing up, and I, I loved it. And, I and I, then I started to realise that um, not a lot of people did it. So when it used to rain, I used to want to go out for a walk or a run, and I wouldn't mind because I knew that I'd come back and I'd be able to get dry and warm. And so then the mindset starts to change that without me realizing. So I would I would always go further and further into the elements and um, and not worry too much because something my mum always used to say to me, you know, the, if you're suffering or there's a problem, don't worry, there'll always be an end. You know, there will always be an end. So there's hope. So mm. she starts to um, teach me about hope without actually just sitting down and going, hope, spell it, this is what it means. Um, so it's all through those little lessons, which you know, parents are fantastic at. And um, and then um, my parents divorced when I was, I think, around 12. And so that that went on to a, a pretty rubbish time. But later on, um, I was selected to go on British Schools Exploring Society expedition to Arctic Norway and Svalbard, Spitsbergen, uh, when I was 16. And... Um, Within that, towards the end of the, the expedition, uh, my application to do a seven day solo expedition um, was accepted. So I went off and you know, had the pulk, had the, the rucksack, had the rifle, because there's polar bears, tent, everything, food, all sorts. 16 year old, literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it, you know, thinking now, it probably worries me now, absolutely more than it did then. And during that seven days, you have everything mapped out. So everyone knows where, where you're going to be, but you didn't even have a radio. You know, it was it was like that. And uh, I remember feeling all sorts of emotions, lots of fear, 
uh, lots of worry, but lots of exhilaration and happiness and just smiling. So that really was the, the next accumulation stage. And then really from there, I just followed it. So I went into the military and, and just loved the physicality of everything I was doing. Um, and I always was always very interested in the military from a very young age, you know, playing with action men and watching those classic Second World War movies and things like that. So really, it was about physicality, moving away from asthma and eczema. And my mum always used to say to me, go on, run around, run around the house and go for it. I'm getting too hot. And it got to the point where I was running around the house, you know, my, my, my pants again. There's a theme here. Um, but it's 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 just that constant exposure to exposure to exposure the training 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 um it becomes part of you then mm. and uh and then the opportunity to start going on expeditions uh was presented and i went on a couple ecuador and india and you know it 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 just made me feel happy to be around um made lots of mistakes as well mistakes and decisions um failing myself, failing other people, and all started to realise didn't like doing that, didn't like letting other people down. So um, as I moved on a few years later, I started to lead expeditions, put them together, lead them, and then lead mountains became a focus and then went on to, to mountaineering, so learning about ropes and, and techniques of ice climbing, rock climbing, and... Uh, and just combining the whole thing. So it's co the coolness of the air, mountains, remoteness, austere environments, all of that um, I just naturally followed into. And um, then, of course, when you become, um, for me anyway, you know, you, you start to get to a point where it's um, emotional elements become much stronger then and fragility and losing I found I lost my bottle a little bit because when you become a parent, you know, you're focusing on on children and, and you see other people and you don't just fit in and out of their lives. You're there all the time. So, so I lost my bottle a little bit about climbing and it's like, well, why would I want to do it? It's a very selfish act. You, you want to do it because you want to achieve, but I find it difficult to emotionally stay uh, focused if I'm emotionally distracted. So um, I found when I was younger, I could just strike out and do loads of things, knowing that I had my family in the background, my mum, my brothers, uh, and it was great. It was just me. But then there's other people now to think about and to care about and to consider. So um, it's just adapting. Mm. But yeah, that's how all the journey started for the outdoors. And, and I, I need the outdoors all the time. Even if it's for five minutes now leading a startup, I need to get out there and just pick some weeds, get my hands in there and mm -hmm. think. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 grown with me and I've grown with it. But adapting and evolving is is normal. It's integral. And do you find it gives you that time and space to be to be with yourself? If you know, so you mentioned this expedition when you were 16, was it? And yeah. seven days was that alone? Did you say? Sorry. Yeah, yes. so it gets a, a duration of time to be by oneself, isn't it? And kind of, you know, to get to know yourself a bit better and without any distraction or anything and just that time to be reflective and take everything in, mm -hmm. I can imagine. Yes. Yeah, I, you know, it's um, that was back in the day when you had a, an audio cassette tape and, uh, you know, uh, forget what you call it now, but one thing you play it in and then the headphones and the batteries, you, you can only have so much charge mm -hmm. for so long and I remember at the time it was uh um Simple Minds was my favorite for some reason I borrowed all my older brother's music and I hadn't listened to it and I just played it I was like wow this is this is immense um and aha and rock set but we'll, we'll stop there <laughs> <laughs> and uh and I do remember at one point where the tent was pitched it's one of those massive heavy steel pole canvas tent so you know it's not light and it's all set up and I went to explore my surroundings and I just found myself naturally climbing something it was a bit more of a scramble really and then all of a sudden the weather closed in and visibility just 
sucked in and I, I couldn't see a thing. And I I know that I was quite high up. And then I heard the, a real sort of strange sound and it was getting louder and louder and louder. And all of a sudden, it's called a fulmer. You probably may have heard of these birds, but they're huge. And um, it just went over my head. And, and the noise was immense. Um, and it just disappeared. And then um, I started to feel really scared. Mm. So this was the first time I'd ever felt really scared and uh, and I had to control that. And I don't know, I instinctively started sort of taking a few breaths, relaxing. And now we know it's if you take breaths in a certain way and you do so many it accesses the sympathetic nervous system, which relaxes your body instantly. Mm. And I find it really interesting how we don't always need to read books on stuff. We, we've got thousands, we've got millennia of dna in us from our ancestors where we know things without realizing and so that got me interested in emotional intelligence and and feeling rather than thinking as much in moments of uh of duress yeah. wow oh, love that that's so much bravery there I'm just, yeah. like, just... come on a week well, on your own like that that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's such a young age yeah. as well like i imagine the the learnings from that and just yeah, that must have been incredible. What an achievement at 16. Mm, that really is. <laughs> I, I was relieved to get back, actually, um, because the, that vulnerability and living in your own mind is is hard. And it's very hard for people. And I know that now because you know, when leading people on summit attempts, it, it can be very, very daunting for some people because it starts to, you start to think about things and you start to feel things. And for me, I was only a few years away from my, my, when my father left. And, you know, so the whole dynamic of the family is changing, I'm changing. And and so um, I don't remember too much about really, you know, those feelings, those moments there. But I remember coming back and feeling really proud that I did it. Mm-hmm. And before I left, my mum had um, baked me a like a Christmas cake. And it was so heavy because it was full of everything. And she said, this will keep you, this will keep you going. And she gave me a small tub of tomato sauce. Well, because I love tomato sauce. And <laughs> I remember always thinking I can go back to the tent and treat myself with that. Yeah. Uh, so really having food, um, something, a go-to food that makes you happy, yeah. uh, you know, that gives you that warmth is also really important. Um, so, yeah, I felt really proud when I got back. And um, I remember people asking me, because there were loads of other people, people my age there saying you know what what did you do what did you experience and um and so chatting about it and so felt different and and that feeling different I think is really important for people Mm -hmm. and I felt that the first time I went down to uh down to Limpston in Exeter um you know coming back on the train thinking yeah I am different uh and it's okay you know, it's yeah. good to be different. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So um, I think the more we do, the more um, different we feel. Mm. And that's really exciting. Mm. It's really good. That is something really to celebrate, isn't it? Our differences. It's, yeah. It is. And, and to feel, you know, to feel different is is absolutely OK. And to in, embrace that and embody it is, is wonderful. Um, and I'd just love to circle back a little bit to you mentioned about then getting interested in emotional intelligence and feelings. Um, and I'd love to just bring us on to the topic of compassion, if that's OK. And um, just looking back at your TEDx talk, um, you mentioned that you're a man who deeply cherishes compassion um, and that the world needs compassion. Um, and I'd just love to explore that a little bit more in terms of what have you through giving yourself self-compassion, but also compassion for others, kind of what your learnings have been in that. Like what does what does compassion create? Wow. <laughs> yeah uh compassion can be the easiest thing in fact it should be the most important thing and easiest thing that we we cherish every day and we're, we're consciously grateful for um when we're when we're at the extremes of our emotions i think it's really difficult to use compassion to pull both ends together into the middle and tighten it up um but now ever ever so more than than at any other point in my life, um, experiencing 
things in deployments, deployed environments, you know, war footings. I always noticed that women and children, no matter what, were the, the first ones to suffer and the ones to always suffer and the ones to suffer afterwards. Um, and um, and that, th- that got me, um, it, it got me really frustrated uh, and really angry at times because my mother was a massive influence to me my my now wife is a massive influence to me and father of two two girls as well as you know monty and i hated the fact that people didn't seem to see them mm. it was all about the mission it was all what is the mission you know the the there was there was so much um confusion from my part to why um things weren't happening and why people weren't being protected and so i realized then from that that actually you know protecting innocence preserving innocence is really important to me and again you know um i fail (laughs) i get it wrong and sometimes i am selfish and i don't do it but most of the time the majority driver behind everything i do i it is you know that that's very important and then leading people in remote austere environments on mountains expeditions it it, it re- made me realize that um it is it i don't mind suffering to help other people and it's i don't think about it at the time and i don't like to reflect on it too much because it feels a little bit um uh, it feel it feel i don't like the attention to be on me regards that it's just a very natural thing and um and it's good to do so uh you know helping other people when they're suffering and helping other people when they um when they may not realize they're suffering Mm. but it's going to get worse is if i've got if i've got strength and and presence of mind and heart to be able to do something to help then i will uh but i i know that um, protecting and preserving innocence is really important for me and so all these different experiences I suppose come into that one word which is compassion and compassion is the capability to see someone else's suffering and to acknowledge it and to help that's all it all it is mm-hmm. and so um, we all could do with compassion on a daily basis individually because when we're feeling vulnerable or suffering, that's when we could do with, you know, um, someone saying it's okay and giving you a hug or or making you a cup of tea. Just mm. something, doing something for someone when they're suffering without wanting anything in return. That's all it is. Yeah. We, we do it, in fact. I would, it would be interesting to see how much we do of this without even thinking Realizing. about it. Yeah. Basis. yeah. yeah. But as, as a human, we are defined, one of our greatest, greatest elements is compassion. Mm. Um, I heard something on the news this morning about uh, a conflict. And I thought to myself, it, wouldn't it be incredible if women were in charge <laughs> and they <laughs> they could see the route more clearly? And I am absolutely 100% on this. Mm-hmm. Us men are capable of incredible things and wonderful things and very lovely things, but women are so much more capable of practicing compassion and also self compassion as well. So, self compassion comes from self compassion. Unless we unless we um, find contentment with who we are, we don't have to. We can't find one hundred percent contentment. I don't feel I haven't found that yet, but. Uh, acknowledging that you know there are good things and there are things that aren't so good but fundamentally we're good uh and it's okay you know that self-compassion that having standards having values and not letting those be eroded no matter what even when it's really hard like really hard and tough um to maintain that is really important making sure we hydrate making sure we eat well making sure we get enough sleep because if people are relying on us, we must do that in order to help them. And that's self-compassion. 
Mm. And then compassion comes from it. It is, isn't it? And it's looking after it. I mean, we're big advocates of this, aren't we, Sean? I think yeah. I'm sure any of our listeners know this, how much we express this is filling our own cup first and, and giving ourselves what we need first and giving ourselves that self-compassion so that we can be there for others in the ways that we wish to be there for them without giving from burnout or resentment. Um, it's giving from overflow and abundance. Just kind of like you said, Dave, you know, refueling yourself with the sleep, with the eating well, with the hydration, and just showing the kindness and the caring and the encouragement to ourselves as well as others. And then it's just much easier to do then, isn't it? Um, and like you say, quite unknowingly, we're probably practicing it as well um, towards others. Um, and I think sometimes we miss the self-compassion and because compassion is such a natural thing for us to do. That's where in missing the self-compassion, we just exhaust, we can be guilty as women of exhausting ourselves and being so compassionate for others but then we can reach that burnout quicker. Whereas kind of having that self-compassion just in between there <laughs> can really just allow us that love and care for ourselves as well as giving it out as well. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very important. Um, Cause I, I see, uh, I see, I see good women, good people um, constantly being there and doing things for others. Uh, but it, it's beyond, it, it is very much what you've both just said uh you've got to do the right things by yourselves and not at all costs to avoid burnout yeah. um because it'll it'll just make other people that care about you unhappy um you know so it's if you start practicing that as a at a young age you know and seeing seeing um and remembering you know girls when they're growing up to the age of seven are noticed that they're fearless bonus ears you know the fearless cleopatras they are incredibly strong-minded um you know and fantastic full of creative life and everything and there seems to be a change when it's after the age of seven or thereabouts and and then things start to towards the end of primary school you know that transition of primary school to secondary school um something changes and then it's as though the opposite happens and it becomes conformity is is the survival tool mm. if you don't conform and fit in you know yeah. so um there's a there's a brilliant book and I, but unfortunately i can't remember the author but it's about it's about uh amazing women of our time and it goes back for hundreds and hundreds of years even a, even a couple of thousand years and it talks about certain women who were really really important and why they were important and what they did. And that was a gift that was given to my eldest at her, um, her baptism, which was, you know, all about this book. I remember reading it to her. And it was it was interesting just mm. looking at that. But um, creative individual identity is really important for females, I would say. And it doesn't matter what that, what that looks like, um, as long as standards don't drop. I've noticed also standards are very important for females and to maintain those standards, personal standards and slight, slight periphery standards. And then those will survive all the turbulent times and, and health as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, self-compassion on a daily basis is important. It's so important and it starts with hydration. Uh, the four pillars of strength, really hydration, sleep, mm -hmm. nutrition and exercise in the fresh air yeah. and if those four can be done every day little little wins little goals little steps then it's good but hydration is the base plate yeah that's great amazing would you mind letting us know what that book is Dave and we'll pop it in the show notes um yeah yeah, yeah that'd be great to pop in there that would be brilliant I'd be intrigued by that and to yeah. maybe go through that with my girls as well and um yeah, yeah that sounds brilliant because I think there is that and I'm my daughter's just reached seven and I can see that I can see that starting already my um other daughter's five and she's got that still got that fearlessness that not no worry you know I mean she still does you know have a have a you know a moments in a day is like but I, I'm just seeing now that that conformity is maybe coming through and I know mm. personally that I spent a long time trying to fit in and trying to blend in. And what I really loved about your story, as you were telling us before, was that the elements have always been a part of um, 
a, just a bit of something for you like you said the kind of feeling of the the breeze or the water or the rain on your on your face and we can so easily lose what that maybe was from our childhood can't we that really gives us that that oomph in life that you know that's that that's our joy and I've kind of recently I suppose come back to mine because I grew up with with horses and I was so lucky to be surrounded by them as such incredible animals and I almost kind of like box that off <laughs> and I, when I went to uni I didn't have them anymore and then when everything happened with with my dogs and stuff like I've obviously had dogs um for the past what 11 years and I now volunteer at Dogs Trust on a Thursday and that's like honoring little Charlotte who used to be surrounded by horses like to get my old clothes mm. on to get in the mud, all weathers, didn't matter whether it was raining, you know, snowing, <laughs> whatever it was, those animals needed looking after. And it's really just reignited that in me. And I think I'd maybe come dis disconnected from that and almost conformed into what we're meant to be and just lost that piece of magic that really fills me up inside. So that was just really interesting to hear your story on that because kind of validated how that Thursday morning and it's two hours of volunteering and walking dogs just lights me up from the inside out <laughs> that's that's great so I can't remember if someone told me or I read it that the secret of adulthood is taking childhood into it and so we must never ever ignore our inner child and the more we can maintain that the better yeah so if it fits into things that we love doing, then then we should do it. We shouldn't shouldn't deny it. Yeah, and it's remembering all. what those were, isn't it? Because it's sometimes I think we can go so far past it, we can forget all of that magic that you know, and the eyes that we used to see the world through. Like, God, my connection with animals was just everything, and I just kind of lost sight of that because life just got a bit adulty. <laughs> I don't think that's a word. Yeah. <laughs> it is It is now. It is now. <laughs> it is now for sure. Oh, it's so true though, isn't it? Embrace that inner child, not forgetting. And just if we've got yeah. to reignite it, let's reignite it yeah. um, and tap into it because it does bring us joy, doesn't it? The things, the things that once were can still bring us joy and it's remembering those and embracing all of those. Um, it's been yeah. so wonderful talking, Dave, and I think the messages are clear here, aren't they? It's get outside. It's look after yourself. Mm. Hydrate show yourself that compassion and give it to others as well. Um, yeah. And on, on the getting outside note, we're going to be meeting up. Aren't? We're going to be getting together, aren't we, Dave? That's that's right. In January 2024, yes. Dave is going to take us up Snowdon. And I say yeah. us, I mean <laughs> all of us guys. <laughs> so <laughs> if Snowdon is on your bucket list, if you want to come join us, the Authentic Girls Club and Dave Pickles on tour. We're going to go up stone together. Dave is going to be our guide. Um, and I'm so sorry. If you could hear knocking in the background. Can you hear anything, guys? Or you... No, that's Just good. Sorry. It's fine. Just it's sorry. Fine. I'll, keep, I'll keep rolling. I'll keep rolling. Um, we ha we're having an extension done in there. They're getting to work, should we say. Um, so, yeah. So if you would love to join us, we're going to be doing it um, towards the end of January on a Saturday. Um, date to be confirmed but just dm us the word snowden or drop it to us in an email um and come join us because we honestly can't wait charlotte can we and we wouldn't want to be taken guided by anybody else dave um mm -hmm. you are the man uh to do this and i think it's just going to be especially that time of year as well it's yeah. going to be crisp it's going to be exhilarating um so i thought i'd just share it with you guys because Yes. let's get the ball rolling um, and what a time and... to do it the new year new yeah. adventure like literally let's go and get into the into the wilderness <laughs> yeah let's go be free let's go get clear um what a great space to come and get clear for the year ahead um, and we get to do it together um which is what it's all about so we'll be so seeing you Oh, and also just a couple of things on it uh we're not going to be going up the Lambaris path everyone does that we're going to be going on um, the other side of the mountain. And in terms of ability of the group and the weather conditions, everything, it's um, best laid plans never survive first contact with the enemy. So by that, 
It's just constantly adapting to the group and the conditions, the terrain, and it's there f- to be fun, to achieve yeah. zero pressure to perform, but just a really nice, fun, like-minded environment. Um, and uh, we'll do what we we'll do what we can in accordance with the capability of the group and also the weather conditions, and that's it. Yeah, so it'll be, we'll, all, we'll all achieve. Um, but I just just wanted to mention something as well. The um, the whole idea of um, of slowing down and becoming a pedestrian mm-hmm. is so important. And if we did that, it would allow us to then do the next thing, which is mm-hmm. to look at treetops. So you just look up and look at treetops and just smile. It's little things like this are really, really easy to do and they make you feel great mm-hmm. you know what comes first ha- feeling a happiness or a smile well a smile if you physically smile and you're feeling down you will immediately become happy that is the pathway mm. you know less muscles in the face what do they say is it three to smile and 26 or something to frown M- might be less than that i think i just made that up but it's quite it's a <laughs> lot more it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, it's a lot more um and uh, and just looking after the the basics, there were times when I was dreaming of cool fresh water to drink, and the fact we have it through our taps, we all have choices of what sort of approach we have on drinking water and where it comes from. But the fact we've got it running through the tap is the most amazing thing. Um, water is life, and the more we hydrate, eighty percent of our body is made up of water. The better we hydrate the better our brain function is, the quicker we heal, the better our lung function is, the better our organ function is, and, uh, and, you know, we live longer. So just start the day hydrating properly and um, everything comes good from that. Brilliant. I don't know about you guys, but after this, I'm going, first up, glass of water. Yes, I I am this up there and I was like, right, that's my bad boy after this. (laughs) But you know, it doesn't. We don't need to overcomplicate things. And I love that, Dave. It's just it, let's keep ourselves hydrated, and it has a a beautiful knock on effect in many many areas of our life, doesn't it? And being the pedestrian, taking the time to look up and seeing the beauty that we're absolutely surrounded by, and just how big the world is. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it's one of your favorite things to do, isn't it, Charlotte? Just to sit yeah. up and look at the clouds. I I yeah, I them. go outside and I just look at. Well, I have a window actually, so I'm in basically at the top of the kind of the loft of our house as we speak. But we have two slight slanting windows, and just to open that window and just sit there and just look out to how big the world is and how amazing the clouds are, and at night the stars like. Oh, I don't know. It just it make just reminds me how I suppose it gets my perspective right. Mind you, how big the world is and how wonderful the world is. And there was actually a moment recently where I looked up and I, I saw my first really strong, really big, the biggest one. I, I didn't even know they could get this big shooting star. And <laughs> as I saw it, just afterwards, I was like, wow! Like, and it absolutely blew me away. But I heard because uh, we didn't live in town, people walking back from town it was thinking it was like it was either a Friday or a Saturday night and I were obviously a little bit tiddly (laughs) and I just it amazed me because I thought they've not seen that they've not seen how amazing you know like how much goes on above us that we just if we're not looking we just I don't know that there was just a little moment there I was like it's okay to miss stuff we're not can't look up all the time but yeah just sometimes when our head's so focused and when we're just walking, we forget to look up and see that bigger picture, don't we? Mm. So true. Yeah. Well, there's um, vibrancy. Uh, I've discovered that uh, within the, the business I'm involved in, the word vibrancy for, for women, for females, is really important. Um, performance is more of sort of a male, I think, focus because you, you know, women perform on a daily basis. Uh, but your ebb and flow of vibrancy... And with the hydration as well, of course, you know, you've you've got your 28 day menstrual cycle and then your life cycle as a a female goes into perimenopause or maybe straight into menopause. So everything that's done when we're younger will help later on in life. Mm -hmm. And um, and that vibrancy, I think it's really from a male who doesn't understand, but I have the empathy to appreciate. I think it's really important for women just to understand there are days that energy may be down, 
mm. might have a bit of mind fog. There's all sorts of symptoms of everything in that 28 monthly cycle <laughs> and then later on as well. And I think it's really important that if, if someone isn't doing it already, that they track and use that as a really good predictor and to manage their own vibrancy by looking at those uh, symptoms and looking at what stage they're in. Uh, and if they're unsure, find out more um, about, you know, going to the perimenopause state and then the menopause state. Um, and thankfully, there are, we talked about this previously, but there are more movements in workplaces now to support uh, women going through the menopause. And it was World Menopause Week, or we are in the month now, aren't we, actually? <laughs> so... Um, so that's really important. That's a really good practical thing to do. Uh, one of one of the skill sets I've got, um, it, I was a physical training instructor for a, for a period of time in the military. So seeing female uh, performance as well, uh, physical performance and mental performance stimulates from really strong, good discipline base plates. And that's why I talk about hydration and mm. making sure posture so hydrate between hydration and posture, you've pretty much got everything set for life then. It's really important. And if anyone wants to know how to take pressure off your lower back and, and provide good posture, literally do a hip tilt slightly back, squeeze the lower tummy in just above the pubic bone, and that helps flatten out the lower arch in the lower back. As soon as you do that, it starts to relax the whole spine. You can get the neck back and the collar and relax. And you're, the human's adult spine is designed to carry around 50 kilos of weight. And the more it's vertical and relaxed at the bottom, the more that transition of weight um, is achieved. So you get less, um, less issues with, with sore or stiff um, or disc problem related areas in the back as well. So hydration and posture are really important. And then managing vibrancy on a daily basis within the life cycle of a woman and that way they're, they're really easy things to do mm. and they don't cost anything no really great foundations that. just a wealth of knowledge Dave it just yeah. you just keep giving honestly <laughs> like and what you watch is our chart and I sit up I nice know I was straight. literally <laughs> like my my <laughs> bone is not straight right now. <laughs> um honestly it's been incredible having you on the show and um, we knew it would be thank you for everything that you've shared um there is so much value there. And yeah, like I said, the takeaways earlier, um, it's look after yourself, the hydration, the posture, um, be kind to yourself, show yourself that compassion and absolutely get outside. Um, so remember, guys, you can join us in January um, yes. as we walk um, up Snowdon with Dave. Yeah, um, what's the let... word, guys? Snowdon. Um, let's get an adventure planned in for January and start just start the year off on an absolute high. Um, yeah, in the wilderness. Let's do it's it. Exciting. Oh, it's lovely <laughs> to see you, Dave, and we'll speak to you guys soon. Thank, Thank you very much, Charlotte. Thank you, Kat. You're Thank welcome. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 B